welcome to Machines More and welcome to Computex 2024 and here on site. And I did want to talk about something, a recent development, and that's the SFF Ready uh, card designation and the case de designation by NVIDIA. Uh, I'll just explain what that is. We'll go take a look at a few cards that fall within that uh, specification and then I'll kind of share uh, what I think of it. So first off, the designation for SFF Ready Enthusiast card that's going to be 151 millimeters uh, card height. Oh, and by the way, these are all 40, 70, and above. But 151 millimeters card height, including the bend at the power cable. Um, it doesn't really uh, specify how much the power cable can bend. Uh, 340 millimeters max length, and uh, the kicker is actually the thickness, because I think 50 millimeters, two and a half slots, most uh, 20 series cards would easily fall into that designation. But since the 30 series launch, cars have been getting bigger, really, really the coolers have been getting bigger and bigger, and that has made picking a car a little bit more difficult. A lot of you uh, may have uh, bigger coolers and you want to fit into a case and you kind of have to pigeonhole. So I am uh, just on a fact-finding mission here. We're going to learn a little bit more about what that SFF Ready uh, standard entails, yep. and I've got JJ here with Asus again, and uh, we're you know, JJ is, represents ASUS, and they're in a unique position where they have both a case, and they have motherboards, they have cards, they have power supplies, and I thought it'd be really good to get some input. Um, you know, JJ, can you tell us a little bit about the standard, yep. what that means, what it really changes by the dynamic on for SFF? Yeah, I mean, so I think ultimately, I think what NVIDIA was trying to do was actually look at where there's continued market feedback, right? When you have the 40 series that launched, um, that was a very exciting, of course, graphics card introduction, but the mass majority of the solutions on the market were quite large, right? Um, accordingly, they needed to be large to really be able to ensure consistency and performance as far as both from a thermal perspective and acoustic perspective. Um, at the same time, I know there was a lot of people in that kind of medium form factor and small form factor community that was like, hey, we felt like we're being left out because we can't accommodate that, that GPU support, right? But now in coordination with NVIDIA, really the main thing you're trying to establish, I think are two key things. One is going to be the slot thickness of the graphics card. Right now, it's very common to find cards that are going to be exceeding three slots. It's not uncommon to see 3.25 to 3.65 plus slot based cards. So the target is going to be 2.5 slot. So that critically helps to ensure that I think you're going to be able to have a much more compact chassis, right? The second part is also going to be the total clearance length of the graphics card, right? Ideally, I think already for most chassis, if you could be probably not exceeding 300 millimeters, they're already in a good spot. Yeah. But here you're going to be seeing cards that'll be well under that. Uh, part of the intent of the SFF Ready designation is to uh, simplify the parts choice and component choice uh, process it's also a cross-marketing effort uh, in order to, one, uh, promote their cards as being uh, SFF friendly, uh, so to speak. So Gigabyte has one single card on the list, and that's the 4070 Eagle OC V2. You see, compared to the original OC, it's significantly lower profile, and that's likely to come within that designation. So that is a good thing. Zotac is showing off two of their cards that's on their list. One of these is going to be the, well, they don't really say what these are, but uh, one of these is going to be the 4070 Super Twin Edge, and another one's going to be the 4070 Twin Edge. And you can see these are pretty compact cards in terms of the uh, thickness here. This is the 4070 Twin Edge. Even though this 4060 basically shares the same cooler, as the 4070, the 4060 is not on the list, despite it being perfectly within the dimensions of compatibility. All right, MSI didn't have a single card on display, but they did have a build with that in uh, with one of their cards there. M series that we're going to be introducing, which will actually be kind of a uh, MSRP target based model, kind of like our dual series, yep. but stepping up to a three fan solution, you can see meets that criteria being 2.5 slot, but uh, being quite a bit actually more compact than our Pro Art, so less than 300 millimeters at 269 millimeters. So that's just an example of really affording users a very compact card, minimal length, and then also optimally trying to ensure that you have enough depth height, right, where you're controlling the height of the card 
to not impact essentially uh, panel performance, right? Where you don't want to be able to essentially press in the panel and then have that pinch up against the cable. And I noticed side. part of the the standard uh, includes the bend. Correct, the bend of radius. The cable. Yep, yep. Um, can you shed some light on what that radius might be? Because I know if you bend it enough, it'll work. But is there kind of a a general guideline as how much that cable should bend? Yeah, general, generally the amount of clearance that you usually want, I believe is going to be 27 millimeters, as okay. far as that's what you're ideally kind of targeting. Um, some chassis vendors may even try to go a little bit more because it can be tricky depending on the quality of your cabling. Mm -hmm. Some cables tend to be a little bit stiffer, some tend to be a little bit more malleable, right? Um, so you have to account for those factors. So I would almost recommend that if you can be closer to maybe like 30 millimeters, even a little bit more, that's even better, right? But I believe the minimum that you would really want to be is that at 20, Definitely not less than 25 and probably 27 or greater. So that spec is essentially accounting for 27 millimeters for that yep. width of the cards. So I seem to have found what uh, might be the quietest corner in the all-day exhibition hall. It's kind of the launch rush. Now, did stop for some uh, fried chicken. You can see that uh, behind me. This place is really good. That's like Taiwanese street food style chicken. Um, yeah, um, so I did get a bite to eat, but I have uh, walked the floor and I did want to share my thoughts. So one thing I did want to clarify. So on the case side, there are specifications, and that is 154.5 millimeters of clearance for the width of the GPU, and that applies to either vertical mount or, you know, such as in a, a sandwich style case, or a traditional horizontal mounting, and, and you have a length clearance there of a 312 millimeters that's spec'd. So it doesn't seem overly restrictive. Um, you have cases like the NR200, A4H2O, Fractal Terra, those might be considered your more uh, bona fide SFF cases. Uh, but what is not immediately apparent, if you take a look at the list, is what constitutes the definition of SFF, because you have e even cases that would not colloquially be considered SFF, like uh, ASUS AP201 is on there as well. So either way, on the surface, there uh, to me, th these dimensions really aren't overly restrictive. I think many users in the know you kind of have a general idea uh, what to look for already. So benefits here, at least it does establish a general starting point or understanding between case manufacturers and uh, NVIDIA card partners for what GPU dimensions to target. And uh, I think maybe the bigger benefit is it takes away the ambiguity for new to SFF builders. Uh, so while many of you are savvy in figuring out what to build with, those new to the game, they might not have um, any idea what to look for, and they will appreciate this more turnkey approach. Especially not everyone thinks of things like the, you know, the power cable bend and, and factoring that into the dimensions as well. So that does avoid a nasty surprise there. Obviously, there's also what appears to be a cross-marketing um, effort uh, to promote NVIDIA cards and, and the cases, uh, probably more so on the side of the NVIDIA uh, spectrum. But I, and I do question why the line was drawn at 4070 cards uh, for no reason than, you know, other than to perhaps promote uh, sales of the higher SKUs, uh, no reason necessarily to limit it, uh, that, you know, there's no reason that a 4060 can't be held to the same standard, right? Um, the other thing is, I think some of the finer details are still being flushed out, and it does remain uh, to, uh, to be seen what the specifics are, but, but I did also want to get a few perspectives, so let's go back onto the floor and talk to some uh, in the know. Then I have Bruce here with Cooler Master because as you may have seen, the NR200P and also the Encore 100 Max, right? Yes. Those are yes. listed SFF ready cases. And what consumers can expect for from S something being called SFF ready? Yeah, it's because according to our research, uh, uh, most of the ITX players, they aim to build the most tiny, the tiniest build for them of their, uh, on their desk. But uh, due to the current uh, GPU design, there's a four slot most and the lens is uh, oversized actually. So yeah, this time, I mean, they are building this kind of new ecosystem called a small phone factor. So it's aiming to restrict the uh, GPU lens of the certain high power perform high, per high performance GPUs. So let's allow, as our case can restrict or uh, reduce our size of the ITS case. So which means we can help the ITS player to build a uh, um, uh, more tinier or tinier uh, or smaller form, uh, form factor of the ITS case. So I wanted to ask you a clarifying question because the NR200 didn't change. Yes. The, the NR Core 100 Max didn't change. Is this uh, your thought more that it's on the GPU side to get the GPU uh, manufacturers or, or card 
cooler designers to uh, be aware mm -hmm. of the smaller yeah. parts? I think it's because the current ITX case market or the design is the lens is is restricted by the power supply size and the motherboard size both. Yeah. So which means this this size combined together is definitely can install the fourteen ninety series of the GPUs. Yeah. Like like this and. We are looking forward to have this kind of the small form factor GPU definitions, which can restrict our uh, help us to redesign or enforce or improve our future ITS case design to maybe have the uh, most comparable size of the ITS systems by uh, by rearranging the ITX, uh, ITX motherboard size or uh, ITX placement or the power supply placement. Uh, and going forward, do you think that your uh, SFF cases, you'll all have them kind of uh, fall within that standard, that uh, yes. the certification? Yes. For now, yes. Okay. Because uh, according to uh, the latest one, uh, NVIDIA just published the s 4 yeah. meter um, guidelines, so which means indicates our all the cases, all the cooling method cases can compatible with these kind of a new small form factor GPUs, right? Are you at liberty to discuss what? the process entails uh, to get your car uh, case certified? Uh, for now, it's, uh, I think it's under NDA. Okay, all right. But I can discuss about our new case design of, uh, of a new IT case to suitable for, to make the most compatible small form thick uh, GPUs. Yes. But we are not going to have the CNC versions. We are going to mass product and how, how, how we can so, sort of satisfy all the GPU players, including the smartphone editors, yeah. and the uh, biggest monster grade GPU in the future. So let me ask you a question. This, this is kind of more, I know someone's going to be thinking more of this. Is this yes. more of a marketing effort by NVIDIA to promote their <laughs> cards? Yeah. Um, I think it, uh, this journey is start from a good perspective. But according to uh, the AIC, they got their thoughts to develop their own ecosystem or their own design of the GPU, certain GPUs. Yeah. So, which will get a conflict with the media original thoughts. So, in our roles, we are going to uh, have the reach the common sense or reach the consensus yeah. between these three parties. Big thanks to Bruce for taking the time to discuss. And uh, we'll have more uh, coming in just a second here. Tell me a little bit about the case because. Colloquially, we probably wouldn't consider the something like the AP201 to be a small form factor case. Yeah. But I did notice. Yeah, no, that, definitely medium form factor yeah, is what it is. I did notice that targeted. they listed, uh, you know, that, is there a general guideline to what the volume size of the case should be uh, in order to kind of qualify for making that list? Yeah, I mean, um, I think that one's a little bit trickier. That one is, I think, more open to probably NVIDIA defining what they feel is yeah. kind of a more compact oriented solution. So I think that's the better way to frame it. Well, I know the purists out there are going to be like, that's unequivocally not small form factor. Yeah. I think that the truth is that this is still significantly smaller than a traditional large chassis yeah. system, right? Um, so I think in that regard, it's probably a little bit better to look at for more compact. And then if you really critically want to be looking at leader size, then accordingly look at your chassis and see if it hits that uh, that target that you want, whether it's going to be you know 15 liters, 12 liters, 10 liters, right, whatever it might be. That right? impression I'm getting is that some of those details, the finer details are still being worked yeah, out, is that yeah, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. There's, it's, I, mean, I mean, I think part of that is also because uh, it does take quite a bit of effort from a thermal design validation stage um, from the manufacturer to kind of go in qualify their models, right, and what's going to be possible, you know, and you also even have to account for things like thermals and acoustics, right? The more that you, of course, increasingly make this compact, sure, you can make it compact, but then are you going to have users that are going to be frustrated with saying, hey, it's it's hotter than I like it to be, it's louder than I like it to be, and I think that's also still something that we're evaluating, you know, how good can you get the performance, and then also critically, good feedback from the community is, where is going to be your cutoff from a budgetary perspective at saying, okay, I'm willing to pay more, even in an ultra compact design, and you can put the bleeding edge, give me the absolute best, maybe customized vapor chamber solution, the best fans, right? The best milling design, you know, all kinds of cool stuff, but proportionally the value proposition can become more challenging because some people that want to buy GPUs based purely on, let's say, what's the lowest cost 4070 Ti can get? Well, that experience that you're looking for in terms of being really cool and really quiet might mean that you start eating into the price class of the next GPU, but you're getting a very unique tailored solution that really works best for your form factor, if that makes sense. And that's an interesting kind of thing that 
is going to be more applicable to these categories that we have to account for. Uh, that it's not that much of an issue in the ATX side, right? Because on a large ATX system, there's no constraints on really finding any GPU you can fit and you just picking the one that works best for your budget, right? Um, can you tell me maybe a little bit why and they drew the line at 4070? Because it seems like 4060 would be perfectly fine to, to qualify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no, it's not It's not limited to that. I mean, for the Prime Series, we are yeah. developing 4060 class as well. Do, uh, is NVIDIA considering that for that uh, so-called enthusiast card list? Um, My understanding was the 4070 yeah, is they kind is, of is, Yes, correct is the cutoff. Yeah. And I think that just kind of comes into more how you want to interpret performance, yeah. right? Um, I would agree. I think the 4060 is more than I mean, a performance I they share solution. coolers in many cases, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and even like on our dual models, many yeah. times, uh, we know one model is going to be the it's same, the same fundamental cooler, right? Yeah. We design it for that thermal headroom in case. But that's ultimately the decision that they yeah. reach, right? Our job is more so to make sure that we're accommodating uh, the definition, right, based on the product stack, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Well, hey, uh, thanks for your time. I think that was very important detail. Lots of uh, color coming from the... Uh, industry experts here in ASUS. Not a problem. Thank you guys. I am here also to get some feedback from Andrew, and he's the director for marketing, director. marketing and uh, for Fractal. Um, I wanted to ask you, because as someone in the industry who is familiar with the SFF ready designations, what are your kind of initial thoughts there? Is this a good thing? Is this a, you know, proceed with caution moment? Right. Yeah. Well, I think. Um, Honest opinion, I think that um, NVIDIA is doing a really cool thing here. Um, having built um, a number of small form factor cases over the last few years, and also here at Computex we're launching some, um, what we hear from a lot of PC builders is, and you know this quite well probably, that small form factor, there's more thought. You generally have to put a little more, more thought into the, your component choices. It's not like an ATX case where you can just buy whatever's off the shelf and it'll generally fit. Um, so fitment, um, cooling, um, all this kind of stuff is the, the, these extra layers of uh, consideration that people have to put in, uh, put thought into um, to complete their builds. And so any extra help we can get in that, I'm all for. So for NVIDIA to create this kind of chart that shows here's a bunch of cases, Here's how much room they'll support in graphics cards. Just having that in one place is great. Um, you don't even need to use an NVIDIA graphics card to get a use out of that chart. You can take your the specs of your AMD graphics card, go to that chart, check this. They're all in one place, and you can do your GPU shopping from there based on the specs alone, mm -hmm. or your case shopping, for that matter. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think it's fabulous. I'm really glad that NVIDIA reached out to us. They, uh, we worked with them over the last couple of weeks to try to make sure our measurements were in line with their measurements. We had to like figure out, okay, where, where are you saying the bottom of a graphics card is? You know, that kind of thing. The so, bend of the cable. Cable bends, all that how stuff. How much is, is allowed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Okay. For sure. So, right. And we were really happy to uh, find out retroactively that all of our small, fa small form factor cases currently do support the uh, NVIDIA guidelines. All right. all right, well, thank you so much for that color. Absolutely. Just adding this sound bite in after the fact, I uh, did get an official statement from uh, many of you know W360, uh, the man behind N cases, and he says, uh, I quote, uh, the SFF GPU size is a great start and much needed for SFF. Uh, I have a feeling that the 304 millimeter length requirement will uh, get us more dual fan GPUs. What is nice is that at least it seems like NVIDIA is taking note here uh, of the unique needs or wants of uh, so-called SFF enthusiasts, right? Uh, what exactly is SFF uh, remains to be defined, of course. At least SFF is getting the attention it deserves. Uh, of course, for you dyed in the wool, uh, SFF enthusiasts, uh, move along now, right? And nothing to, uh, to really see. Uh, but I think there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, I'm still eager to see the impact that it has on our smaller side of the case spectrum. Uh, if anything, it leads to more thoughtful, uh, cooler designs and more optimized designs. If that is what happens, then I am all for it. So I hope that gives you some color and some additional information onto w as to what the SFF uh, Ready standard entails. Uh, obviously, a lot of moving parts still. But uh, please make sure you're subscribed for our Computex content. Uh, please give a like also. And uh, big thanks for watching.